Hey there, y'all. <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here. I want to say hello to my Facebook Live audience. And waiting on my Periscope to flip. There we go. How you doing? I want to say hello to my Periscope audience. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. You know, I'm excited every week when I get to come out here and prophesy and share the word of the Lord. Because we are living in a time, uh, and this is part of what I'm going to talk about today. We are living in a time where people need to hear from God like never before. People need to hear from the prophets and the prophetic. So, I'll stop by to tell you that if you are a prophet, if you walk in the office of a prophet, or if you have a, the gift of prophecy, or as a Christian, if you're at the basic water level, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, and you still get divinely inspired utterances, it's time to open your mouth. Because the world's on fire, and the country's on fire. And people are looking for solutions. Okay? And the only solutions to fix mankind's problems are going to come from the Lord. Because the Lord is the inventor. <laughs> okay? He's the inventor of people. So he's the only one that knows how to fix whatever ails us. Okay? So let's get into the word today. As always, you know, I pray before I speak. Because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. And today, what the Lord gave me was a continuation of a theme that's been happening all day. The word for today is boldness. But that's not the first word I've spoken about that on this day, because uh, the Lord gave me a prophetic word this morning in service about boldness. Okay, and God is trying to get that point across to the saints to the point where, if you notice, you know what today's date is? Today's date is March 4th. Look at that. It's a date that's also a command. March 4th. That's not a coincidence. Okay, so our scripture reference today is Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Very common scripture. What does that mean? What's the application? Uh, it's the wicked flees when no one is pursuing. That's talking about people that are perpetually guilty. You've got a guilty conscience. When you know you ain't living right, when you know you ain't doing right, when you know everything you do is shady and dirty, you're going to spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder. Because you are perpetually guilty. Said, so, But the righteous, that means we're not supposed to be living that way. We're supposed to be living in light and integrity. Are as bold as a lion. Now I looked up that word bold in the Hebrew. And that word bold there is actually batach. Batach. And it, it really means at its root to trust. So some of the translations in English are bold, careless, uh, confident, felt secure, have confidence, put my trust relied, rely, secure, trust, trusting, trust. So what that means is that the reason that we're bold is because we are trusting in what God has to say. There's a difference in between what God has to say and what man has to say, and that's where people get confused. Man is the creature, God is the creator. But when Adam sinned against God, we got disconnected from God. And the flesh nature was born, and the flesh nature is the opposite of God. When man sinned, we chose death, and we separated from God. And everything that God is, we became the opposite. That's part of what God meant when he said that if, we, if he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in the English it says, thou shalt surely die, but in Hebrew it says something closer to dying thou shalt die. God told Adam he was going to create a cycle of death. And then since Adam ate from Adam and Eve ate from that fruit of that tree, they created a cycle of death, and we became the opposite of God. We became everything that God is not. And that is why we are now born with a sinful nature. God is love, and we are now born full of lust and pride. A lot of people think that the opposite of love is hate. That's not true. The opposite of love is lust and pride. Not hate, because love and hate go together. So we became the opposite of God, and that's why we deal with fear, shame, guilt, toxic anger. All those things do not come from God. Those things come from sin. So when you're living a wicked life, that's why it produces so much fear and shame and guilt. And that's why you're running as a wicked person, as the Bible says, when no one is pursuing but the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. That means we're trusting in what God says. 
So the reason I took you back to the beginning there is for you to understand that, again, there's a difference between the ways of man and the ways of God. The ways of man are fallen. The ways of man are the opposite of God. The ways of man are sight walking. Because when we fell from fellowship with God, we got relegated to navigating through life through our senses. And now we think that what we experience in a sensory way is the truth. The word of God is truth. It's what God says that's true. That's why God tells us he has to teach us again how to be faith walkers. So anyway, that word boldness coming out of the Hebrew means trust because we're trusting in what God has to say. We're listening to the inventor. We're listening to the creator. That's why we can rest on what he says. Because when you talk to God about anything, you're talking to the person that invented whatever it is you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what it is. Money, relationships, children, um, any spiritual things, any type of knowledge, physics, science, it doesn't matter. When you talk to God, you are talking to the person that invented everything. And that's why when we stand on the word of God, we can be as bold as a lion. If God says this is what something is, then it doesn't matter how it looks. And it doesn't matter how it feels. It is what God says it is. Okay? That's why we can afford to be bold, because God will free you from the tyranny of sight walking. God will free you from the tyranny of thinking that what you see with your eyes and what you perceive with your five senses is all that there is, that's incorrect. So we can be bold as a lion when we step out on God's word, because when you listen to God, you are listening to the inventor, and his ways are higher than the ways of man. He says, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so you can imagine the earth, imagine the heavens above the earth. God said, that's how much higher my thoughts are than yours. So there is a way of man, and there is a way of God, and the way of man is fallen, and it leads to destruction, even though it doesn't look like it will. And the way of God is higher, and the way of God leads to life and blessing, fullness, peace, and prosperity, even though it doesn't always look like it will. So why is that so important in today's day and age? Because we are living in a time where it's time for the saints of God to open their mouths and speak the truths that God has given you to say. As I said this morning in my prophetic word in church, the world is looking for answers to the gun control problem. The world is looking for the answers to broken families. The world is looking uh, to, for answers for the economy and for creating jobs. And the world is looking for answers for making the school safe again. Well, if you're a Christian, you got to answer. As you fellowship with God every day, the Lord drops light. The Lord drops revelation. The Lord drops insight. The Lord drops wisdom into your spirit every day. And it's time for you to open your mouth. And release the light that's already on the inside of you. Release the truth that's already on the inside of you. Release the truths that God has already deposited in your spirit. I'll give you an example. People keep trying to figure out what to do about guns. So I asked the Lord what to do about guns, and he gave me quite a bit of revelation. One piece of revelation is that we have made guns a God, and the first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We have told God that we care more about guns than human life. And when you do that, you are walking in blasphemy. And when you are blaspheming against your creator, telling him that something you have put before him is more important than him, then that draws judgment. And that's why we got dead children in schools, because we have exalted guns above all else. We have made them a God, and we have broken the first commandment, which says... Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Another piece of revelation that the Lord gave me is, you can't have anything, God bless you, God bless you as well, you can't have anything without sacrifice. And uh, Miss Whoopi Goldberg said it, I was watching uh, one of the clips on YouTube, and she said that people want to have all things all the time in all cases. And she was right, you can't have all that. You can't have anything without sacrifice. So if you're willing to say that we're willing to arm people with guns no matter what,
that guns are the most important thing no matter what, then you're going to keep on getting dead children. You can't have unilateral, unfettered access to assault level weapons and think that somebody's not going to use them on children or whoever. Okay? Because you can't have anything without sacrifice. That's a spiritual principle that governs life because that principle was established by God. If you want to lose weight, you have to burn more calories than you consume. If you want to have money to save and invest, you have to spend less than you make. Well, if you want the schools to be safe for your children to attend, you are going to have to sacrifice because you, can't have, you cannot have universal access to weapons for anybody that might have them, even those with mental conditions, and think that, that is not a going, that's not going to cause harm and danger. Okay? Another level of revelation the Lord gave me about the gun situation was God has called many of his children into positions of authority, and we have just not obeyed. Okay? Old school people used to teach you that the only way to serve God was either to be a preacher or sing in a choir or be on the Ursher board. Not the Usher board, the Ursher board. Okay? That's not, that's not Bible. Okay? Joseph. Joseph had an administrative position. He was lifted up from the prison to be prime minister over the economy of a nation. Daniel. Daniel had an administrative position. Nehemiah was in charge of rebuilding the wall. King David. King David organized and codified the nation of Israel. Okay? So this whole idea that you can only serve God in the house of God, there are some people that are called to function like the Levites and are called to full-time ministry in the house of God. But that's just one tribe out of 12. All the other members of Jesus' body and all the other saints, you are called to wherever God calls you to. And there are some people that you're listening to me right now. You've been called to run for Congress, U.S. Congress, a U.S. Senator, a U.S. Representative, or State Senator, or State Representative, or Alderman, or you've been called to uh, be a principal at your school, or you've been called to go for superintendent. God has called you to a position of authority, of, of authority and influence so that God can have righteous people in positions of authority and influence. But the process to getting there is going to be a purging experience and it's going to be very, very difficult. And the Lord showed me that's why a lot of people, yes, one of my dear friends is a registered nurse. That's right. The ministry of medicine, healing hands. You think God doesn't give us healing in a variety of ways? Medicine, all type of, of there's even music therapy. Okay. So, uh, but the process it's going to be one of purging because it's not going to do the Lord or the people any good for you to get in a position of authority and influence, and you're no different from worldly people. So God's going to have to scrub and purge and scrub, and it's going to hurt, and you're not going to like it. But God's going to have to scrub. He has a purpose. He's not trying to hurt you. He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to get out of you the things that are not like him. So like Joseph, if God were to trust you, what would you do? If God trusted you with the economy of America, what would you do if all of a sudden you had $3.4 trillion at your disposal? What would you do? What would you do if you had a billion dollars at your disposal? What would you do? What would you do if you had $10 million at your disposal? What would you do? See, if we don't behave any differently when we get in positions of authority and influence in people in the world, then what good does it does it do God to put us in those positions? And so I know some of you have been wrestling for a very long time because you, you haven't understood what God was doing in your life. He won't let you get away with some of the things other people can get away with. He won't let you say some of the things other people can say. He won't let you go some of the places other people can go. And sometimes you see people doing things and you feel a sense of conviction. You feel like, well, they maybe do that, but maybe that's not right for me. And you don't like that. But the reason the Lord is doing that is because he wants to lift you up like he lifted up Joseph, like he lifted up Nehemiah, like he lifted up King David, like he lifted up Daniel, to put you in a position of authority to bless a nation. 
But if you do not have, as the Lord said, your righteousness must ex ex exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Okay? That's why things have been so rough, the purging process, because God wants to lift you up. And what you also need to know, I'm still on the gun topic, is that what the devil will do is the devil will wait until you get into a position of, posi uh, of power and influence and then activate an old scar, then activate an old hurt, then activate an old wound that you never got healed. That's why God is shining his light in your spirit and your soul, calling you to healing and wholeness. And that process is painful because you've got to face some stuff. But what the devil will do is he'll wait until you get there and then... Call up an old scar, call up an old wound, call up an old hurt. And the next thing you know, a whole bunch of people are offended and a whole bunch of people have been turned away and a whole bunch of people get confused because we have behaved in an unchristlike way in a position of authority. That happens all the time. That's why God spends so much time trying to scrub us of the things that are not like him. And that's why if you want to make a difference with the gun situation in America, you have to be different if you get in a position of authority than the people that are willing to sacrifice our own children on the altar of guns because the streets are running red with the blood of our own children. And the people that, that believe that that's okay are going to keep on defending that position. That means the kid's going to keep on dying. So what good is it going to do for God to put you in a position to make a difference if you don't have any more righteousness than that? If you can't see that we're killing our own future. Do you understand that? Don't you understand the traumatic impact on young people when they see that the adults don't care about them? When you are young and the adults that are, see, being an adult, to a child means, it's supposed to mean that you're something that they're supposed to aspire to be like. They look down the future road of life and they say, well, I want to be like that when I grow up. If you are failing them and telling them in no uncertain terms, we don't care if you live or die. We just want to have our guns. And the kids are going to be like, they're going to be just like the teens on the CNN town hall to stand up and say, you have failed us. And that means we have not done our job if the youngest generation have to stand up and rebuke the adults and say, we can't even go to school in peace and safety because the adults have not made our safety a priority. Okay, so it's going to take righteous people with boldness to stand up and change the laws, change the political landscape change the conversation, change the social landscape, and reintroduce the godly value of valuing human life over guns. There's no way in the world God spends all that time knitting us together in our mother's wombs, giving us our personalities, our, our skills, our, our, our gift sets, our, 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 our anointings, our gracings, and our giftings. There is no way that God spends all that time knitting us together when our mothers are carrying us to have our lives gunned down in, in senseless violence as teenagers or children just because we went to school that day. Didn't even do anything but get up and go to school that day and now your life is over. That is not from God. When, you, when your mother is carrying you God is knitting your spirit and your soul and your body together because there is something that you have to give birth to on the earth. That's how important human beings are. There's something that you have to breathe out if you have gifts of medicine, gifts of architecture, gifts of music, gifts of athleticism, gifts of finances. Whatever it is that runs in your family and whatever it is that God has given you, he knits that in you when your mother is pregnant with you. So when you come out here in life, if you don't develop and give your gifts, the world is a poorer place. So that's why we have to understand that valuing human life and valuing our children and letting our children know we care more about them than we do about guns. We want them to be safe. We want them to be educated, but we want them to grow to full maturity. Let me put something else in your head that God gave me. What do you think is going to happen 
when the children that have grown up with all that gun violence, what's going to happen to the people now if they live to see many years? Do you think they're going to want to take care of you? Why would they want to take care of you and you didn't take care of them? Did you ever think about that? Did you ever think about that if you live long enough to get to a place where you can't take care of yourself, what if you have to depend on the younger generation to take care of you and it's them same people that watched you make sure everybody have guns and they watch their classmates die? How do you think they're going to feel about you then? Do you think they're going to have compassion in their hearts? Okay, so if you want compassion, you have to sow compassion. If you want people to love, you must be loving. If you want people to care, you must care. So as adults, people that are adults now, you're sowing into your later years if you live to see many years by telling the younger generation that you care, that you want them to be safe, that you want them to be educated. You invest in them and then they will invest in you. If you throw them away, they going to throw you away. Do you understand that? So God is calling for people to get in positions of power, authority, and influence so that we can bring righteousness to the land on every level in uh, legal climates, in social climates, in social media, in conversations, and reestablishing values that understand that our children should be able to go to school in safety and learn and become adults and make their contribution to the world and not have to worry about their lives ending just because they went to school that day. That's only going to happen if righteous people are in positions of authority. It's not going to happen any other way. And so that is why God is calling you to be bold. Open your mouth and release the truths that God has already put inside of you. And if God has called you to run for Congress, whether you're for your state or for the United States Congress, or alderman, or for principal, or superintendent, whatever God has called you to run, then I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to be bold and run. Open your mouth. Abre su boca. Open your mouth. And let the truth of God come out. Because when Jesus Christ whispers to us the answers... Yes, my friend is saying she's interceding for the state. That's right. Those of you that are called to intercession, how big is your prayer? Do you just pray for your family? Do you pray for your neighborhood? Do you pray for your church? Do you pray for your state? Do you pray for your region? Do you pray for your country? Those of you that know you're called to intercession. But it's time to be bold. Okay? It's time to be bold. And as the Spirit of God brings all of this wisdom and insight and knowledge, okay, I walk in the office of a prophet and I go to a prophetic church. And if you flow in the prophetic, you know that the Holy Ghost drops things in your spirit. He, he deals with different prophets in different ways. Um, it, it can be a sound. It can be a color. It can be a word. It can be a feeling. It can be an open vision. It can be a scripture. It can be a song. But the common thread is that the Spirit of God opens the understanding of your spirit. He opens something on the inside of you that you couldn't see. Yes, dreams as well. That you couldn't see without the Holy Ghost. Well, it's time to start releasing that. It's time to start letting people know what you see. We're not just supposed to go to church and keep our prophetic flow to ourselves. We're not supposed to just get all this wisdom and all this insight and all this time that we spend in the presence of the Lord and then just do nothing with it. It's time to release it because the world is on fire. You understand that? Your country's on fire. You understand that? Because they need to hear the voice of God to bring the solutions to the things that ail us. And that's only going to happen when the saints open their mouths and when the saints get in positions of authority and we can bring righteousness to the land. And I have to say this last bit and then I'm going to close out. You're going to have to gear up for the persecution. You're going to get persecuted. That's another reason, God, I know that many of you have been through a very rough preparation process. Some of you have had experiences like Joseph. You got sold out by your family. And you're saying to yourself, I didn't do anything. And your own siblings sometimes have hated you. 
Some of you have had a process like Job. It's like you were going along serving God and you were doing the best you knew how to do. And then it looked like the devil came out of nowhere and attacked every side. Every side of your life, your finances, your health, your friends, your mental state, your emotional state, your job, your spouse, your kids, and all of your investment. Look like the devil just came out of nowhere. Okay? That is a Job experience. Some of you have had an experience like Christ, meaning all you did with your life was do good. You tried to do everything you knew how to do to, to heal and to open blinded eyes and to make people's lives better. And then the very people that you helped turned on you and all of a sudden you're a criminal. And all of a sudden there's some kind of scandal. And all of a sudden the same people that were crying Hosanna last week are crying crucify him this week. That was Jesus' Jesus's experience. So I must warn you, my brothers and sisters, you're going to have to give up for the persecution. But many times that's why, because I know why you were going through the preparation process, because we all do it. We question God. We ask God, why are you letting me go through all this? Why, Lord, why am I being 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 persecuted to the ground right why am i being tried in every way why is every area of my life look like it's under attack why god why the answer to that question is because god is trying to toughen you up god is not only trying to get out of you the things that, that need to get out of you but god is trying to build some strength into you because when you stand up and you speak the word of god you're going to get persecuted and many times the persecution is going to come from some of the people closest to you, like relatives. Never forget that when the Lord started preaching, his mama, his brother, and his sisters, he was in the marketplace, and they were outside, and they said, tell Jesus to come here because we need to sit him down because the Bible says very clearly they wanted to commit him to a mental asylum. Did you know that? That's right. Jesus' mother, brother, and sister said, that boy is crazy. <laughs> that boy stood up talking about he the son of God and he's the Messiah and, and he's the deliverer and he's the bread sent down from heaven and we have to eat his body and drink his blood. And I don't know what happened to my boy, but just tell him to come in. We'll just go on and see the doctor. They said that about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. They're going to call you crazy. They're going to sell you out. The devil's going to come at you from every side. But be of good cheer, as the Lord said, because the Lord said that I have overcome the world. That's why Jesus went through everything that he went through so that he could turn around and tell us as he speaks from heaven and as we hear him through the Holy Ghost that the Lord says, I overcame that. I overcame a betrayal in my own group. My best friend denied me. My best friend started cursing and swearing in public to act like he didn't know me. I overcame my family thinking that I'm crazy. I overcame uh, hatred and mistrust. The Lord overcame everything that we go through. And that's the encouragement today. But again, I must warn you, you're going to get persecuted. If you stand up and, and open this and let the truth of God come out, you're going to get persecuted. So you need to gear up for that. Okay, But the Lord will speak from heaven and the Lord will give us comfort because Jesus Christ did not just have sympathy for us. Sympathy is when I feel sorry for you. Jesus Christ has empathy for us. Empathy is I understand how you feel. Okay, And when the Lord speaks from heaven through the Holy Ghost, he will always tell you. By right, getting written up at work just for bringing your Bible to work, that's right. The Lord will always reach out to tell you that he understands. Because the kind of leader that God is, he's the kind of leader that does first what he wants you to do. God always leads by example. He's the best kind of father that he is. And that's why uh, as a man, you want to pattern your fathering after Father God. You want to be the kind of dad that Father God is. Obviously, as much as you can, you're human. But I'm saying that's the model to pattern after because Father God never, ever, ever asks us to do something that he hasn't already done or demonstrated. For example, 
He told Abraham to offer up Isaac, and Abraham had waited all his life to get Isaac. And Abraham built a, off, uh, an altar, and he was going to op uh, offer up Isaac. And God stayed his hand, because God said, I just want to see if you was willing to do that. But the Bible said he received him again in a figure. What that means is that the, uh, the Father God used Abraham and Isaac to paint a picture of what Father God was actually going to have to do to save us. He painted a picture with Abraham and Isaac about how he was going to have to sacrifice his son so that we could be saved. So if Father asks you to give something, remember that Father gave Jesus first. If Jesus asks you to give something, remember that Jesus gave his life and shed his blood first. If the Holy Ghost asks you to give something, remember that the Holy Ghost gave you his presence, his power, and his promise that he wouldn't leave you. Because his name is the Holy Ghost, but we are not always holy. We, don't, we are not always holy in matters of the spirit, of the heart, and of the body. And he does not leave us. He, because he promised he would leave us. He promised that even though we do not always do holy things, the Holy Ghost will indwell us and abide with us forever. See, so they have already given to us first. There's nothing, nothing God asks you to do that he hasn't already, by example, demonstrated it for you. So that's what I mean when I say, once again, uh, I exhort you to be bold. Be bold. Open your mouth. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Mary. Open your mouth and stand up for what the Lord is telling you to say. And you're going to have to gear up for the persecution, but be of good cheer because God has already gone before you and God has already dealt with persecution. I want you to imagine Noah's life. What does life look like if you're Noah? If you're Noah, you got to be out there building an ark for years and ain't a drop of rain in the sky. And people going to talk about you like a dog until it starts raining. So God has already gone before you and God will speak from heaven and give you encouragement so that you can overcome the persecution. All right. All right. There's a prophetic word the Lord wants me to release and then we'll close out in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests, let me know. Oh, my people, I have seen your plight and I have heard your voice. I want you to not be afraid because I'm with you. I know every small detail of your life. I know the number of hairs on your body. I know the number of cells in your body. I know every organ. I know how much blood your heart pumps per minute. I know your weight. I know your age. I know your secret dreams. I know your childhood. I know your future. I know your DNA. I know your chromosomes. I know your bones. I know your circulatory system. I know your respiratory system. I know your digestive system. I know you. I know your nervous system. I know you. I know you. And I want you to know that I'm with you. I'm closer to you than your next breath. I'm with you, my people. So do not be afraid. Do not walk by sight and live by what you see. But listen to me and live by faith and be bold. And as you begin to release the words of truth that I have put on the inside of you, that is how I will begin to deliver this nation. Because when you hear my word, you must obey my word. It's not enough just to hear me. You must obey me. But I will give you the word to release. And then as human beings, you must obey. And as you hear the word and obey the word, blessings and peace and order and restoration will come to this nation says the spirit of the living God oh thank you God I think God deserves a clap for that one okay praise God for that so do I have any prayer requests if I have any prayer requests I will pray for anybody right quick if not we will close out with prayer amen God bless you amen amen all right I don't see any prayer requests so I'm just going to close out with prayer so thank you Lord for this time thank you Lord for a new spirit of boldness and a new spirit of confidence that you have released upon us, your prophets, and us, your prophetic people. And the entire body of Christ needs to receive the spirit of boldness and confidence. So as you give us the wisdom and the insight and the answers, you gave Joseph the interpretation of the dream. You gave Daniel a spirit of excellence. You gave Job money management skill. You gave Abraham money management skill. You gave King David organization and structure. 
You gave Apostle Paul foundational structure. So as you release the wisdom and the inside of heaven unto us, let us walk in that spirit of boldness. Let us walk in that spirit of confidence to release what thus saith the Lord. And as we hear your voice, O God, and as we believe and obey, then we expect the blessing, the healing, the peace, the prosperity to return to our land. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for sharing your word with us because we can't live without you. We can't exist without you, O oh God. If you were to withdraw yourself from us, we have no chance. We have no hope. But we thank you that you promised to never withdraw. We thank you that you sealed us by your spirit as a guarantee that you would be with us always. So we're excited about your word. We're excited about the days to come. And we're looking forward to walking in boldness and strength and courage to be able to release your words that the land might be healed as the people hear and obey. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and, and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen and amen, my brothers and my sisters. Amen and amen. Bless God. Bless God. So, I'll be here my regular time next week. My regular time is 2.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time every week. I'm on Periscope live at 2.30. I'm on my Facebook live at 2.30. And if you don't catch it, when I do it live, you can always watch the replay because the replay is up on both. Okay? A prayer for direction and a new job. Okay, Sister Mary. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you for Sister Mary, O oh God, that you would give her the direction that she needs because your word says that if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, that you will direct our paths. You made a promise that you will guide us, you will instruct us and teach us in the way that we should go. You made a promise that we are not orphans, but that the Spirit of God here is to guide us into all truth and to demonstrate us and convict us when we are not righteous. So I ask for guidance, O oh God, into all truth for Sister Mary and for a new job, that wherever you would have her be, to be light and salt and truth uh, of Jesus Christ in that situation, that you would guide her to it in no uncertain terms and make her know in no uncertain terms that that's the job you want her to have, that you might use her to bring the light and truth of Jesus Christ to everyone in her sphere of influence, to the glory of God the Father, to praise the name of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. We believe it. We believe it because we believe that we have what we pray when we pray it. We know that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. That's 1 John 5, 11, 12, 13, and 14. All right. All right. Again, God bless you. Uh, God bless you so much. Thank you for tuning in. I'm here every week, 2.30 p.m. Central, Star, Central Standard Time on Periscope and Facebook Live. I'll be here next week. And uh, when I have the new music ready, I will let you know. And then I'm going to be on some other uh, podcasts. I'm going to be on some other ministry channels, so I will let you know that too. Okay? Thank you. God bless. Have a good rest of your Sunday. And remember, in the name of Jesus Christ, be bold. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.